Good morning, everybody. I'm George Latimer, Westchester County Executive. Welcome to White Plains and our announcement today of the endorsement of Tish James for a governor of the state of New York. Um, it was a month ago today that voters in New York State went to the polls. And when they went to vote, they voted in primarily local elections all across the state. And uh, many of you in the media reported accurately that there was a red tide a Republican tide that swept on Long Island, that swept in parts of the Hudson Valley, portions of upstate New York. There were some areas, Ulster County, Monroe County, where the news was good, but outside of New York City, the single biggest story that, uh, that was the opposite of the red tide was our success here in Westchester County pushing back against a false narrative and having success as Democrats in this suburban county. And this county, of course, for those of you who know it very well, is part urban part suburban and even a little part Hudson Valley rural. And so I'm here today with some of those people that were on the ballot uh, joining in our endorsement. I want to make sure I introduce them to you uh, because these were the people that were most recently on the ballot and most recently successful in pushing back against that narrative. We're joined today by members of the Westchester County Board of Legislators, Democrats all. The chairman of the board is with us today, Benjamin Boykin. We have with us, and ben, and ben represents White Plains and Scarsdale and West Harrison. We have with us Mary Jane Shimsky, who's the majority leader of the board. She represents some of the river villages on the Hudson and the town of Greenberg. We have with us, uh, or we will have with us, uh, the, minor, uh, the majority whip, Chris Johnson, who represents uh, a portion of the city of Yonkers. And then, uh, in no particular order, we have uh, County Legislator Ruth Walter, who uh, currently represents uh, Bronxville and a portion of the city of Yonkers, Nancy Barr, Rybrook, Port Chester, part of Harrison, Colin Smith, who represents Peekskill, portion of uh, town of Cortland, uh, and then some areas in, in uh, Yorktown. We have with us Ken Jenkins, Deputy County Executive, former member and chairman of the County Board of Legislators, and Vedat Gashi, who represents Yorktown, a portion of Somers, and a portion of the town of Cortland. Uh, not being able to be with us today, but equally in our endorsing, is Catherine Borgia, who represents Ossining, Croton, Hudson, and a portion of Cortland. Uh, and I don't know who else we may be missing. I think I've got most of the folks. Oh, we've just been joined by Catherine Parker, my county legislator, who represents Sound Shore communities in Rye, Larchmont, Mamaroneck, portion of New Rochelle, portion of Harrison. And it's important for me to give you those names so you understand the depth and breadth of the support. Uh, that is brought to the Attorney General today. People that represent different parts of Westchester County, urban parts, suburban parts, and rural parts, because the success in 2022 in the state of New York is going to require us to bridge the gaps of urban, suburban, and rural, and to have a message of change, a message of dynamism that can unite all of us, first as Democrats, through the primary, and then to the general election. Let me just state that we're here today to endorse Tish James for governor. This is a positive statement about who Tish James is and what she's accomplished in her public service. This is not in any way, shape, or form a negative to the other candidates who are in the race. I know them. I respect them. I think they're all good people. And I think we in the Democratic Party first are going to have a family dialogue. If you've just come from a Thanksgiving dinner, maybe you had a family dialogue at Thanksgiving dinner. But we are going to have, as Democrats, a discussion about how best to move forward and with which individuals that can lead us and which policies can lead us. And, and that, I think, is what we're here to show in our support for Tish. Tish James has done a number of things that I think are very important. The, the single biggest thing is that she has stood up against powerful interests and she's been willing to risk in order to achieve for us. And I'll give you one example that's very near and dear to our hearts. The opioid lawsuits against major pharmaceutical companies represent a, um, a, a righting of a wrong that occurred when various drugs were made available and were addictive but were not identified as addictive so that the doctors that prescribed them and the people that took them 
would find themselves in, in a position of addiction without realizing that they were treating a disease and they were gaining another problem. The pushback on that began with some county governments, we were one of them, that filed lawsuits against some of those major companies. But we would have never had the success that we had in achieving compensatory damages if it was not for Tish James as Attorney General. She took the risk, and it's risk, to go up against major pharmaceutical companies, to take your lawyers up against their lawyers, and to make a strong case that, uh, that there's an unfairness that had to be rectified. And that is exactly what she did. It's not the only example of her standing up to powerful influences, but it's an example that has benefited the residents of Westchester County, who we represent by providing resources that will come back to the county. She was in the county a couple of months ago to give us a big symbolic check. That money is not going to be used frivolous, frivolously. That money is going to be used to help programs in mental health and health that will address those issues of addictions that were created by that which happened. And for that, we owe Tish James a debt of gratitude. But it shows the leadership that she has. Let me give you a completely different anecdote. There's a young man who is, uh, I understand, going to be appointed to fill a vacancy on the Tarrytown Village Board. His name is Thomas Mitchell. Tommy Mitchell, who's in his mid-50s, was a little boy on the street that I grew up in on the south side of Mount Vernon, South 14th Avenue. I was a tweener when he was a little kid. When his oldest brother was a contemporary of mine. I had breakfast with Tommy yesterday, and we talked a little bit about his coming responsibilities. I hadn't seen him in a number of years. And Tommy told me the story about when he worked at the Bedford-Stuyvesant YMCA, and he wanted to initiate a program for computer literacy for the kids that were coming there. Bedford-Stuyvesant in one of the poorest neighborhoods in the state of New York. And those kids were coming to play basketball and to get off the mean streets of Brooklyn, but what they needed was to be advanced with more than just a place to play, but an opportunity to grow their skills, to learn and to move up in life. And Tommy, at that time, I guess Thomas by then, turned to the staff member of one of the local elected officials to help him. That staff member, not an elected official in their own right, was able to pull together the resources to provide the benefit to those kids in Bedford-Stuyvesant. Bedford-Stuyvesant is a long way from where we're standing today, but we are all part of the same state. And whether you are helping those who are addicted to opioids here in Westchester County, or you're helping kids in Bedford-Stuyvesant that need a lift up, that story attributes to Tish James's leadership long ago, before she ever stood before an electorate on her own. So I'm very proud to be here today to uh, give my endorsement to her and, and my colleagues in Westchester County government to do the same. And without any other further ado, I introduce to you our Attorney General, and we hope will be the next Governor of the State of New York, the Honorable Letitia James. I want to thank the County Executive and give my regards to Tommy. It's been a long time since I've seen him. Uh, <laughs> um, today, it's an honor and a privilege to be getting the support of individuals who matter so much to Westchester and to our entire state. And these are the people who day in and day out work in our communities and who do the work in the local legislatures and who do the work in one of the greatest counties of the 62 counties in the state of New York, Westchester County. And I am incredibly humbled and honored to earn the support of your great county executive, George Latimer, Deputy County Executive Ken Jenkins, and 12 legislators and legislators elect of the Westchester County Legislature. Chair Ben Boykin and Nancy Barr and Vedette Gashi and Catherine Parker and Mary Jane Shimsky and Colin Smith and Ruth Walker and Jewel Williams Johnson and Catherine Borgia and David uh, Tubilo and Christopher Johnson and Alfreda Williams. It is an honor and a privilege to have earned their support and their endorsement. And it's an honor, uh, of course, to work with these public servants as we serve the residents of the great state of New York. Um, it is my honor also to continue the work to support and to uplift the residents of Westchester. George Latimer, throughout his entire career, is someone who I've admired. I have admired him because of his ability to get things done. And that's really what this race is really all about. Someone who has a record of getting things done. George Latimer has stood up on behalf of those who have been concerned about our environment. George Latimer and I was concerned yesterday about the Supreme Court and their efforts to, row, to throw back to, uh, to uh, turn back the clock on women's reproductive rights. George Latimer obviously is concerned about the residents of Westchester, which is why he has reduced taxes here in Westchester and negotiated budgets and worked with legislators on both sides of the aisle. 
He is a wonderful public leader. He is someone who has served, and he is a model that should be replicated not only in the state of New York, but all across this nation. Please join me in giving a round of applause to the county executive, George Latimer. And while he has balanced budgets, he has also engaged in innovation and major capital projects and expanded the middle class um, and has um, been very instrumental in infrastructure projects all throughout Western. And I'm proud to partner with him on so many of these issues, including but not limited to the opioid crisis in addressing the opioid crisis and those who are in the throes of uh, mental illness and suffering from drug addiction. I also want to acknowledge the great work of the county, Westchester County Legislature, which should serve as a model for the state, uh, again, on getting things done and serving the interest of New Yorkers. Um, they have banned salary history to close the gender wage gap, equal pay for equal work. They have taken action to protect immigrants, and they have affected criminal justice reform. They have improved education and provided and expanded affordable housing and um, have focused on the needs of the middle class and working people in the county of Westchester. Um, and it is my honor and my privilege to have earned the support of the, so the members of the legislature who are here with us today and those who could not join us because of conflicts in their schedule. But we're here today because New York is at a crossroads, an inflection point. And we must recover from COVID. And the numbers um, can continue to concern me, um, particularly the numbers in upstate New York where the infection rate has increased. But this recovery, um, as we jo join with the county legislature as well as with George Latimer, this re recovery uh, from COVID and from this new variant must be fair. Um, and it cannot be business as usual. We cannot return to normal. And that is why I am running for governor. I'm running for governor because I believe in change, because the status quo will not do. They need, and we need in New York, New Yorkers are hungry for change, and they need someone with the courage and the experience to stand up to powerful interests and to speak truth to power. And they need individuals who can stand up on behalf of all New Yorkers, but particularly vulnerable New Yorkers. And I will be that governor because all throughout my 20 some odd years of experience, uh, the depth and breadth of all of the work has been about fundamental change and has been about serving the interest of others. I'm running for governor to change things and to create a government that works for all of us. That means getting back to the simple idea that government exists to provide security and justice and jobs and a guarantee of basic food and dignity and education. We've heard, we've heard words like that before, but in order to be a change maker, you have to actually get it done. And running for governor, I'm, because I have and will get it done. I've got it done as a staff member in the state legislature for 10 years, negotiating parts of the state budget, negotiating bills and drafting bills in the state legislature. As a city council member, as a public advocate, and now as the Attorney General of the state of New York, I have a record of being unbought, unbossed, and unafraid, and I've got the record to prove it. As was mentioned, we've sued Big Pharma in regards to the opioid crisis, suing manufacturers and distributors, and we brought back billions to fund treatment and education and prevention, $1.5 billion to be exact, and of that, $19 million will go to Westchester. We sued the Trump administration 76 times, going all the way to the United States Supreme Court to safeguard New Yorkers' rights, standing up for democracy, protecting New Yorkers against the erosion of our rights, protecting our environment, protecting immigrants, protecting reproductive rights, the LGBTQ community, health care, and more protecting the Trump administration against efforts um, to take back security funds, public safety funds from the state of New York. Um, and I, we've taken legal action to hold President Donald Trump accountable for his business actions as well. I've stood up to the gun lobby, to the NRA, taking legal action to eliminate the NRA for its years of self-dealing and greed. And I fought for better conditions and transparency at nursing homes, recognizing that the number of individuals who died at nursing homes was severely undercounted. And we've taken 2,600 guns off of our streets through gun buyback programs and takedowns of violent cr criminal rings. 
I've taken on big tech, Wall Street, and financial crimes, standing up for consumers, shutting down sham invest investments, prosecuting predatory actors, and delivering justice to victims of financial fraud, including our senior citizens and those in military service as well. And we've taken action to protect workers and families across this state, from Buffalo all the way to Long Island, delivering millions to the former employees of the Doral Arrowwood Resort when they lost their jobs without notice, returning hundreds of thousands of dollars to consumers who paid for events that were canceled because of the pandemic, and providing critical technology to Yonker Public Schools so our most vulnerable students had the resources they needed to learn. And now I want to take that activism and that energy and those values and ethics to the highest office of our land because all of us need to be included, all of us need to be valued, and all of us need to sustain our families, and all of us need to be together. We find ourselves in the most div divisive time in our country, and now is the time to heal New York, to bring individuals together, but to get things done. All of us need a school that educates our children. We need access to housing. We need infrastructure that works and resists climate change and extreme weather. And all of us need access to job training, work development, and a job that can sustain our family. And all of us need to respect law enforcement. And all of us need to live in safe communities, free of gun violence, and free of individuals who would prey upon vulnerable communities. It's a government that is by, of, by the people and for the people, all of us together as one. And that is why I'm running for governor, and I'm so proud to have all of these individuals who represent the great county of Westchester with me and beside me. It is an honor and a privilege to get their support, and I thank them from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Questions? I guess now we'll open it up for questions. Um, George Latimer is a wonderful legislator. Um, a wonderful county executive. Um, he has exhibited leadership, um, as I just mentioned, on the environment, on reproductive rights, on immigrants, on infrastructure, on economic development. Um, and at this point in time, we are vetting a number of candidates. Uh, but it's really critically important that we have someone who, has, who shares the same values and someone who believes in getting things done. All of us should be focused, obviously, on public safety, and that is one of the priorities that I have been focusing on. And at this point in time, there's a number of issues that we should be focusing on. What we really need to do is look at the data, and we should not be appeal, individuals should not appeal to uh, fear, and we should not be cherry picking data. We need to dispassionately look at bail reform, we need to look at the Department of Parole, we, look, we need to look at um, raise the age. We need to look at a number of measures and factors uh, because gun violence is a major issue which is affecting um, counties all over the state of New York. Yes, ma'am. Oh, obviously, Westchester is absolutely key to the success and my path to victory. And I look forward to working with George Latimer and members of the state and of the legis county legislature uh, to win uh, the office of governor of the state of New York. Um, when we reach a conclusion and when we finish our vetting. I have 20 years of uh, winning, 20 years of always being the underdog, 20 years of being underfunded, but 20 years of winning each and every time. The reality is that I represent the face of campaign finance small donations. I believe that we should repeal Citizens United. I also believe that uh, we should not be focused on fundraising, but we should be focused on individuals right now who are struggling to put food on the table. I'm more concerned about residents right now who don't have a job. I'm more concerned about women who don't, cannot find childcare. I'm very much concerned about COVID. I'm concerned about this new variant. That is where my focus is at this point in time. But at the end of the day, we'll have enough funds to compete and win. I thank you all for being here. <laughs>